Hello, we are back again. It is the end of the Women's Prize season already. Uh, it seems like it's gone really quick. Yeah, it's come and gone so fast. <laughs> the, the winner for the Women's Prize 2022 will be announced on June 15th. Mm -hmm. uh, so in advance of that, we wanted to get together a final time to uh, discuss this year's short list of six books and what we think is going to win mm -hmm. this year's award. But I've come up with a fun <laughs> system to because we've talked quite a lot about these books uh, already. Um, so I will put links below to our previous videos uh, when we discuss all of these books a bit more in depth um, if you want to hear more of our thoughts about them. And I've I, I figured out that clever thing of putting chapters in so you can easily locate the discussions on, on each of the books. We want to use this, this system of uh, looking a bit more in depth at uh, different books. I've got a bit arts and craftsy <laughs> of, of, of making this chart with each of the books and then different categories which we are going to rate each of the books um, with a score of one to five. And uh, obviously we don't know what each other is gonna rate each book. And then uh, at the end, um, do a math equation to come up with what we think is gonna um, win this it's year's an award. If we're gonna add the numbers up. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's really not very complicated. <laughs> it's not complex. more complicated than that. <laughs> Although, I mean, oh. you think some book people, um, you know, really aren't that good at adding. Um, the, the very first <laughs> book award that I was a judge on the Lambda Awards in the States, um, they used a score system and uh, we came up with, the, all the judges came up with scores for each of the books uh -huh. and the, the scores that they added up at the end, uh, they they then like sent around what was going to be our long list and short lists yeah. to each of us. And then I looked at all of everybody's score again and I did the equations yeah. and I was like, actually, you've, you've, it up, yeah, right? you've added it up wrong. Oh, this no. other book should be on the short list rather than this other book. And so, Goodness I don't know, me. it's a good thing to, to yeah double check these things, but um, I'll, I'll try to add up as best I can at the, at the end of this. Um, and uh, so, yeah, from that score, we will have our projected winner, but then yes. we may um, have well, second thoughts. I what or... we'll have after this is on. Uh, the f our favorite that, uh, between the two of us when we yeah, take into both our joint, considerations yeah. because the thing I think is going to win is not my favorite so I don't think it you know, mm. we'll see. We'll yeah, see. yeah. So we'll talk about that <laughs> at the end as as well. But uh, I've I've borrowed this system from uh, Peg, uh, whose uh, YouTube channel uh, she talks about a lot of book prizes as well. Hi, Peg. Thanks for. Uh, I haven't asked you if I can do this, but I'm I'm just borrowing your system again uh, to talk about these books because it's a helpful way to kind of focus us yeah. and talk Especially about specific about aspects so of of the book. So we'll be talking about plot structure, characterization, um, which I really should have made that a hyphen in two and words. And we've got a Z in there as well. Yeah, oops. <laughs> and uh, setting an atmosphere of place and writing quality. And then our overall personal enjoyment of each Vibes. of these books, um, which is obviously very subjective, um, although all these categories are quite <laughs> subjective yeah. in, uh, in how we rate them. Uh, and I so. think it's interesting as well, because I think it makes you really think about what you value mm. in terms of all of these things that are undeniably key things and key parts of a book being good but we have our own personal preferences don't we about which of these things like I'm like well that was good in that but that isn't something that particularly makes me love a book if that is executed well or badly or if something's like not particularly well done I'm like no nah, it didn't really take away from my enjoyment so I'd be also be curious to see how we uh Rate these things with our little cards. I feel like yeah. I'm strip and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> or like at a, at a like drag race ball. Yeah. Like tens, yeah. tens, tens, tens across, across the board. board. <laughs> Although I'm only we're, we're only using five, five points. Five. <laughs> but, <I will> <laughs> but um but before that I, I also wanted to ask you you like your reaction to the the short list and you were just do you have any personal favorites that were on the long list which didn't make it to the short list because personally for me I mean this one sky day I just loved yeah. so much so I was quite disappointed to see not see that yeah. on the short list though I understand but and the the for me it would be the Violet Cooper Scene, Violet Cooper the, yeah Will, absolutely Will Johansson I was really I thought I think that's a really special book to and, see um, that on the short list and having read this yeah. short list I I in my subjective opinion, I think it's a stronger book than a few of these. But, mm. you know, that's the nature of these things. Um, yeah. uh, and there was a few that didn't make the longest even that I really, I think mm. a book I read that I predicted when we were birds, 
Uh, right, yeah. It's a book that's really, really stayed with me. But there we go. The no, nature no, of no. these things. So starting off, so we're going to go um, talking about each category, each book in each category, uh, going through alphabetically by author. <laughs> <laughs> um, starting with plot structure and starting with the bread the devil need. It's tricky because on, on one side I think it is really well structured in the ways that um, I talked about before in regards to the way this portrays and shows abuse and the impact on um, the, the character of Alethea and how uh, she she's come to to feel this way and and, and um to stay in an abusive relationship mm -hmm. even though it's obvious to the people around her that she should get out of it um but the way it shows her childhood and the way she's internalized some things from her childhood mm -hmm. uh i i think is really bold and and one that i've not read about in fiction i don't think before at least not that i've come across the the actual the Biggest comparison I've been making in my mind is actually with um, the the series Big Little Lies of oh. the way that um, and I want to be really careful how I talk about this, but of of how um, in though a in a relationship um, where there's very painful abuse and it's obviously a very unhealthy situation, um, there can also be excitement and pleasure and how those feelings get confused in a person's mind when in an abusive relationship can impact them and add to the sense of that it's like it's nobody else's business if I want to remain in this relationship right. and why it's so difficult to get out of um, yeah, I think that's yeah, an really interesting comparison situation like this. I would say I haven't read necessarily this structure in terms of, but I do feel like it's quite a classic structure generally to do the flashback to a childhood or a younger period to yeah. explain how something has come about. Um, I am extremely not going to talk about this on the on the internet, but I would just say like I, I was reading it whilst the uh, herd depth trial was coming to its head right yeah and again we're not gonna i don't <laughs> um <laughs> That's but it really was a made it for, like i think really even more intense mm. um reading about the way people perceive women in these relationships and the way that misogyny is so insidious in uh society well, and, and also the in the way that he's like a beloved choices. celebrity yeah um, it, in yeah this way. it, That's it kind of was a interesting if not particularly pleasant parallel um yeah i feel like again i feel like the plot structure like uh it was a um i'm not sure i would say it was bold in the sense that i feel like it's almost like the most straightforward way to show what this character i believe it's alethea Okay, sorry, yeah. Uh, but that comes from me oh. and my churchy, because the churchy, I knew people called Alethea, because it's a very Christian name. Mm -hmm. um, yes, but this is this is the thing. I'm so bad at separating these categories out. Like, I want to <laughs> talk about it all at the same time, because yeah. I'm like, that's really characterization. So plot structure, I would say that I thought it was effective if uh, not pushing any boundaries I totally see what you mean in terms of in telling this story, but I yeah, do feel I like that flashback. And it switches between first and third person, which I sometimes find a little bit jarring. And, and I get why she did it in the sense of if you have the flashback in the first person, it makes the timeline a bit confused. Like, I understand why it was done from a like kind of technical point of view, but it still felt slightly jarring sometimes. Also, I don't want to read a first, like first person. You know, it's she goes through extreme trauma, um, and you, you know, reading that first person from a child's perspective would be, well, it would be like reading the Sayaka Murata book, Earthlings, <laughs> which was one of the most unpleasant reading experiences I had last year. And I also would say, in terms of plot structure, it's a plot that relies on a lot of coincidences, um, not only with the dramatic conclusion of the story, mm -hmm. which I don't want to give away, but um, but also with early on her meeting 
yeah. two characters separately um, that she hasn't seen in quite a long time, and they yeah. both happen to and appear I, at. Kind I think of we do some spoilers, times. can't we? I yeah. think because and also she 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 runs into her sort of long lost brother, and I found that because yeah. he's actively looking for her a bit more. Whereas the friend that yeah. comes back felt so um, convenient. Mm -hmm. especially because we don't really meet the friend until quite far and you know the brother is in there from the start and it felt a lot more organic to me the friend I wish we had had a bit more of what that relationship meant at the start like it's, she's referenced but um uh, I'm talking my yeah. way at, out like down I like I'm now I'm <laughs> like you know and then again is this plot or is this characterization because the thing that you were talking about in our last video about the agency of the character i suppose that's character but it factors into the plot structure because yeah. of how it ends so i'm terrible i'm sorry i'm immediately <laughs> struggling <laughs> okay that was fine <laughs> i'll get in, I'll get better it's probably it's probably good for me good for my brain and my critical facilities <laughs> it's, it's a good exercise yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, in terms of rating, um, yeah, because I had a sort of certain idea of how I would rate this plot structure, but I'm kind of, I don't know, on the okay. fence now. The I'm going to go three. three. I'll, I'll say four to average it out. Because <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be allowing for each other. I'm like, I know you're going to so I'm going to change mine. But no, that's fair. Because I'd probably give it a 3.5. Yeah. That's what I, I, I don't saying. think we want to get into half points immediately. <laughs> no. no so next up, the sentence by Louise Erdrich. Hmm. Which I actually really like this book, but I would say probably the plot structure was for me the weakest bit of it because I feel like, and um, we talked about this in the last video, how you can kind of tell that while she was writing it, the pandemic happened and she wove that in. And even though I liked both elements of the stories, I do think it is a quite a sharp shift. So even mm. though I really did like this book very much, I would probably think the, the structure is the weakest part of it for me. I definitely agree. Yeah, uh, it's because though I love that she incorporated it in the, in the relevancy and immediacy of, of mm -hmm. what was happening, uh, that that was that's been kind of like cemented in literature. But at the same time, yeah, as the execution as sort of, of it perhaps could be yeah. a bit smoother. But then, having yeah. said that, I don't feel like it's a two, so I'm gonna have to give it a three again. I think I probably will give it a two because okay, yeah, again, we're evening it out. Of, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> two seems so harsh. You know, this is why I struggle with five star ratings just generally for books. It feels like the the gap between each number is cavernous at times. Low on Bliss by Meg Mason. I read this so long ago. <laughs> and I read it, yeah, much more recently. I'm going to have to just uh, go on my so... vibes and memories for the books I read a, a longer time ago because I can just remember thinking this book was pretty flawless and special. So I assume that the plot is part of that. It's quite a gentle move. It's not really, it's not like a super pacey, plotty. You I talk, mean, yeah, it's just... You, it's... you should go further than that. <laughs> It, I mean, it is just sort of following her life as yeah. it's going on and the progression of her relationships, but also her understanding um, of her own mental health. I guess in terms of like plotty things, in terms of revelations and mm -hmm. changes, uh, yeah, it. Um, I mean, I... I did really enjoy like the pace of it in terms of like her first marriage and and how like oh yeah this this seems like a good idea and then <laughs> when she gets married and and you realize how horrible he is and um and that she how she extracts herself from that and, and you're like so relieved mm. at least I was so relieved as a reader that that she got out of that so quickly and then um yeah and, and also yeah how she she plots it of of showing a scene at the very beginning and then oh, going back to yes, that scene at the very clever. end yes, um yeah. in in so that it, at at the very beginning i was initially much more sympathetic with with her and and felt like his actions were a bit wrong but then as no, the right, the story goes sorry, on and you done. understand more about the dynamic of their relationship and her mental health situation um is i mean definitely still very sympathetic with her mm. but also much more sympathetic with him and and the the portrayal of that of of how the the issue between them isn't so much her 
mental health issues, but what she has chosen not to discuss with him and be open with him. And because in relationships, if, if there's like a big major thing in somebody's life and they're withholding it from the other person. Well, that's, that's all tangled up and that's not, it's not that those are two separate things, is it? Her mental health and her decision to, those are not distinct things. No. Her, the, the What's happened to her factors into her mental health and her mental health cause like impacts the decisions that she makes and the perspective she has on how to make good decisions. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, in, in the way the story builds up to show the complexity of that, yeah, mm. I, I think um, is really powerful. So I'd read this quite highly. Um, yeah, it's one of those ones, isn't it? Well, struggling like it between feels, four and five. Yeah, because it feels like you can't penalise a book just because it doesn't do something like wild and fancy with its yeah plot because that's not what it's trying to do and you, yeah, you have that's to not what it's rate you, you, it's unfair to rate anything based on something it's not trying to achieve I don't think yeah and I read it incredibly quickly and loved it and I'm gonna give it a five <laughs> so just... you're gonna give it a four yeah. <laughs> so you're <giving> it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I will give it a four. Yeah, just okay. Okay, next up, the book of form of and emptiness Which by is Ruth Osaki. Definitely doing, you know, this is kind of the opposite, isn't it? In terms of whether you like it or not, this is this has got a very present structure that's trying to do clever things. Yeah. Um, I just it's hard to divorce these elements from the other elements. Um, but if it we're is. thinking about the plot structure. I, I, I'm gonna be account. I'm gonna be allowing for you a little bit. I think with my, because <laughs> even though this wasn't a favorite, I enjoyed it, enjoyed it more than you. Mm -hmm. Um, I really liked the. I thought it was a little bit too long, which I guess comes into yeah, this I category. Yeah, I definitely think it's too long too. Yeah. Um, and but I essentially really enjoyed the way it switched between the book and the the narrative, and I really liked. I really liked the way that it did that. So this is gonna rate highly for that even though I might it might not so much in other things I really enjoyed the playfulness of the of the plot and the structure whereas for me yeah those elements didn't work quite as well so I, I would read it down for that and also there's there's some things like quite late on in the book introducing the the aspect of that uh, the the author the Buddhist like that comes kind of becomes mm -hmm. an intentional like celebrity and um and how it like switches to her perspective in a way that felt slightly jarring and unnecessary for me. Um, and it worked. Let's go more, more on the gut instinct. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go for a four with this one. Because I'm going to go with two, I'm afraid. That's okay. And yeah. It's not, but like, as I say, it's a book I liked much about, but it's not one I'm personally affronted by that you don't like it so much. <laughs> we're massively going to first. So and we're going to swap, swap going to be yeah, interesting <laughs> with <laughs> The Island of Missing Trees. Even though there is whimsicality in the plot of the, um, I guess, yeah, sort of narrative voice, which is maybe slightly different of, I just feel like the way it was plotted and moving between the, the present and past and and showing the relationship between those things and then and how the different narrative strands work in this mm -hmm. and although i know you're going to criticize the like plot revelations of 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 things like like i did want to like speak a bit in defense of, <laughs> of that of the the whimsicality of uh, like insects interaction with with fig trees i i found that really like fascinating and but for me it's how... not the whimsicalness of it i love whimsy it's the execution mm. of it and how it's used in the plot but but i think in in terms of like the the levels of like both telling you something about the the story and and what's mm -hmm. happening in between the characters but also telling you um something about the interactions in our environment which we don't often think about or are, okay, aren't aware of on, on that, a though, because level. What, the one that really bothered me was the mosquito telling the tree and that primarily bothered me because it felt <laughs> convenient it felt like like a way to get across a key plot point in a really in a way that to me was frustrating like a mosquito coming into like i feel like <laughs> that was like if you couldn't think of another way to do it like it that was an issue mm. 
but then also like you can't like what a mosquito being like i was hungry i had to buy a baby oh no i feel bad like that's not an element of the environment we don't hear about a lot like, it's a mosquito i don't feel guilty about biting babies and i refuse to accept that that is something that's something they don't feel guilty i reject that <laughs> okay there are okay. things i liked about this when we come on to things like atmosphere of place you know mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. it's not this isn't this is yeah. one of those books that really suffered for me because people kept telling me how much they loved it. They're like, spang it, spang it. And I was like, great, okay. And I really like her. I think she's an incredible woman. I've never read her before. So I think partly I yeah. was just expecting it to be this like extraordinary feat of literature. And for me, it had things that worked and things that I found a bit disappointing. And like things like the, the scream, I loved that but i don't feel like it really i Harry wanted it to go bit, farther yeah. mm -hmm. um and i really there was the, there was things i liked that i felt i didn't go any further and then the things that were more present were the things that i felt were a little bit more clunky or convenient but you know what obviously uh, each to their own i just reject the idea that there's like we're learning about the environment through mosquitoes being guilty about biting babies okay maybe not that, that specific aspect <laughs> but there are know. other I mean, interactions i'm being and... a bit flippant yeah. about that just because that seems so frustrating that was yeah, where the yeah, book yeah. i think lost me like i was up until that point i was like getting something from a lot of the elements even if some of it wasn't working and that was just i think in my head that's like the scene is like symbolic of what didn't work for me about right. the book <laughs> so yeah. and i think that uh, yeah i mean it's it's totally fair yeah there are sometimes we come to a moment like that in the book we're reading and it's that just kind of yeah, really impacts our yeah. feeling about the story as a whole so i think yeah. part of the reason as well i get frustrated by it is because i feel like it was for me, it was really close to being a book that I would have really loved and mm. I didn't quite understand some of the choices. But I also realise I'm very much in the minority. I will give it a three because, yeah. Oh, I, 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 I mean, no, no, I mean, no. yeah, you, you have made me I'm gonna think have about to this more, but, but also, yeah. And then finally, <laughs> we need to write our scores down. Yes, yes. Don't want to forget. Otherwise, the maths will be in trouble later. <laughs> <laughs> Great circle, Maggie Schipstedt. <laughs> we're already on to that and we've only done one uh, okay okay i loved this it is such a long book and yet and it's not i can't i'll be lying if i said it's like a quick you know sometimes you don't speed through it it takes to me ages to read but i was delighted the whole way through i didn't like i would have happily read another 100 pages mm. um i think the way and apparently in the original draft there was like two or three hundred more pages of this which that, like, yeah i would too i love the way it built up the kind of generations before again like saying you know about like the bread the devil need like that's obviously quite a classic thing to show how to kind of yeah. how we get to where we are but i thought again i thought it was really beautifully done i really liked the contrast with the the starlet i thought that was mm. really well worked in because it's always a bit of a risk isn't it to have that kind of secondary plot line because it's it's easy to feel like i wish i was in the other story yeah and i thought the balance was right as well in that it wasn't 50 50 it just it, it was right to focus where it did and then you just got this extra layer i loved the ending i thought it was beautifully paced cleverly done and really honestly just a master class in like how to like not manipulate i mean in a good way manipulate your emotions because that's what books do but yeah. that sounds negative what's a, like a positive version of manipulate <laughs> like uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess craft a plot in a way yeah. that it like it was Exercise surprising and thrilling at the end. Like, like I was really... trying to make you feel things. Like you yeah. feel the things she wants you to feel, which is manipulating our emotions, but in a good way. I just yeah. felt like I was in such safe hands. I love reading a book where you feel like the author knows exactly what they yeah. are trying to do it and executes it beautifully. Yeah, uh, all of those things. But I I do know some other people felt differently about this plot and, and okay. were actively put off by the the starlet aspect oh, okay. of, of the story and um and so couldn't read the rest of it because oh, of that reason but okay, but yeah personally i and and i was worried about that when i started reading this mm -hmm. that like oh is this really gonna work but um but yeah it, it sort of built up and became more moving and um for for me um the the uh, though the all the historical bits were fantastically written mm -hmm. i felt like it really added to my pleasure of them of yeah. going to the the more recent present and, and it has a real um, purpose and that's that. the crucial thing isn't it like yeah. it has a purpose it's not just like oh a fun contrast it has a purpose both in terms of what it's telling us about the characters in terms of society in terms of like women's roles in terms of and then the the, 
the, the very the plot like the end obviously don't do too many spoilers mm. um but the the way it wraps up obviously couldn't happen if it wasn't done that way yeah um it, it really what what was fun it's a very different book but i was reminded of reading plain bad heroines yes because of absolutely. the um cutting between the kind of starlets making and a kind of starlet who's kind of a bit of a mess and struggling with like I, and even though they're very different i'm books, sort of mythologizing this yeah. aspect from history um in the present yeah. and then it the history intruding yeah. upon the present in a surprising way. And they're very way. different tones, yeah. but I actually think they're really, they'd be good <clears throat> things to read mm. near to each other um, because they're playing with some similar themes, even though they're done in very different tones and styles. Um, and they're both very long. Yeah. The books that I both like really enjoyed being, you know, when a, when a book is that, good, yeah. I love a long book because you can just Absolutely. really like settle into it and just really like relish being in that world for a long time. Yeah. There's nothing worse than a bad long book. Yes. I, I mean, mean, nothing worse. There are many <laughs> yeah. worse than in a reading. Kind and of who the knows? World. I mean, maybe if those two or three hundred pages, extra pages, were in here, maybe it would have felt no, a bit bloated. Just, but yeah, it's easy knows? to say, isn't it? I would have read more, but of course, actually, it's pretty perfectly formed. I'm going to give it a five. Oh, yeah, I think I am too. So, so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just totally successful in how carries that thought through. So. Great. Okay, on to characterization and starting with the bread the devil need. Um... Okay, I'm going to be annoying right at the start. Again, are we saying, <laughs> <laughs> again, it's like intention that's interesting, isn't it? Because I think we had a similar issue with this character in terms of their agency in their own story. Yeah. But arguably the character was yeah. fully realised in the way that I would assume the author intended. It's not like that happened accidentally. Yeah. And I think, again, there's that different thing of, like, when you feel like characters are slightly out of control of the hands of the author and they're not, like, a what, like don't know their characters. That isn't what's happening. It's a fully realised, well, yeah. very real character. Mm. But their lack of agency, maybe that's more of a... I know we've already done plot, but maybe that's actually more <laughs> of a plot thing, their lack of agency. Because, like, mm. that's about how the story unfolds. Whereas, actually, as a character... It's a very real, fully realised character that even if you don't, I wish she had more agency, but it's true to her character that she doesn't. Yeah, yeah. So it's <laughs> tricky, isn't it? I feel like the author has executed it in the way that they wanted to. Whether I thought that was a good choice or not is a kind of, again, overlapping conversation. Yeah, but I'm, not I'm just taking same. characterization as in, I guess, yeah, how much I believe okay. in this character okay. as like a fully realized human being that I can imagine yeah. existing out there in the world. And um, yeah, for me, I absolutely- In which case, yeah, very good. Believe her as like, there, there were so many like small moments with, with her and like, and, and I love, I know this very like, sentimental thing is like but I just love that she's a reader and like yeah, and yeah. the the moments of her um reading books and and uh, sort of in a similar way to the sentence of like commenting upon current literature of like mm -hmm. dropping in all these references to yeah, current Jim books you know as a reader yeah. it's just like it's just so lovely um seeing a, a reader like reflect on their experience and like and what a meaning it holds for her in her personal life of, of having, having this quiet, solitary reading time, you know, especially since she is such a solitary person, mm -hmm. like her only um, social contact is with him because he dictates that it's, mm -hmm. it's so. And so um, her reading and experience reading and immersion in these books is so personally um, important for, for her. Um, so, you know, I love that aspect of it. But then also the, you know, small connection she makes with yeah. the... the the um the her colleague and you know sharing like cheese and crackers in, in the morning when they're they're um having a chat and how gradually she starts to to confide mm -hmm. in in her um I I yeah I I really loved those moments and um so uh yeah. I agree I agree but also the characterization of you know Kim uh, if you want to characterize well I think yeah can characterize him as a villain of yes. of, 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 uh, of yeah absolutely controlling her and his um warped psychology um to yeah I think he's entitled to do that and and the the way he is actively manipulating her to mm -hmm. um continue staying with him um yeah I fully believe Kim as that that psychology that sort of masculine psychology of of and her mother as well who I think could have easily 
fallen into mm. almost farcical like farcical kind of cartoon that's what I mean rather than the farcical like cartoon villain because she's so awful and her uncle I don't want to yeah, yeah. yeah I say uncle there's... um again they're awful and I think um and yet they still felt like very real like almost scary in their realness um mm. And I think it can be hard sometimes with characters who are not the main character and do awful things for them not to feel almost cartoonishly villainous. And I thought that she handled that really well, especially with the mother. Yeah. So I thought it's very good. I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to give it a five. Okay. But well, that's fine. Funny. I would say that there was two minutes. I would say that the some of the second characters needs would could have just been a bit more uh, like well-rounded for me to top it up. And to the sentence. I thought the characterization in this was really magnificent. Honestly, I felt like or everyone I met felt real and nuanced. And the woman yeah, who's died is such a ah. Oh, we've all met people like that. <laughs> yeah. And I, the the main character is so nuanced and flawed and warm and clever. Like I just thought the characterization was, and also bonus point for Louise making herself a character. You know, <laughs> I know you love that part of it. Yeah, I did. I making did. an appearance. Yeah. Um, it was fun. Yeah. So I thought it was a real strength of this book, the, the way the characters were written. Yeah. Um, I, I would agree largely. I think there... I mean, almost in the way that you felt that that there were some secondary characters, I just didn't quite have a total hold oh, on. That's so interesting. Them. Just for me, they really felt so like the rest of the staff mm. of the books, the bookshop. They all felt so distinct uh, to me. Especially like I love the way the young people and their kind of optimism and naivety with their sincerity was written. It just felt so true to kind of young activism. The old crotchety old man, I thought was mm. such a wonderful character. But like, as in, that's just for me. Yeah, I, uh, I they felt, they felt true to me. I'm gonna give it okay. a five. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it a four. <laughs> and we're sort of bouncing each other out again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Imagine if they all come out with exactly the same. <laughs> no. Characterization in Sorrow and Bliss. I, I, I don't know what I thought was just wonderful like the main character is i think one of the most fully realized cleverly written sensitively written characters i've read in a novel in a, in the last couple of years yeah i, I mean i yeah I, I i think she's written about in a really excellent way um i can understand how um like i've heard from some readers that uh find the use of comedy and her kind of um, following the everydayness of her life. Um, they, uh, well, I've just heard some people say they were off put by that and, and find it, I don't know, almost like kind of trivial or, or something of, of the way that it was being oh. portrayed. But, but I think it's, it's, really clever how is that not what real life up. is like though? yeah like, it you is still it have is to do that is when you are going through trauma when you have mental health difficulties like you still have to live your life you still have to do mundane stuff and you still have moments of joy and comedy for me that was part of why it was so cleverly done because that's what real life is i also love the sister relationship as someone who's very close to my yeah. sister i just the the i thought i was just beautifully done yeah. The one thing yeah. I would say is I know that some people, speaking of other people's opinions, <laughs> I know that some people didn't, it's sort of split opinion, hasn't it? The fact that she doesn't specify what right. the, the mental, mental health is. thing is. And mm -hmm. I think some people like that it keeps it vague because it's not about the specifics of that. Whereas some people feel like it's a bit of a cop out to not get into the specifics of it. Mm. Um, I find that I don't have a strong opinion either way on that and would be led by people with more experience of me with grappling with the mental health uh, issues that are, it's a, I mean, it's a shallow pool what they what she's talking about. And I yeah. think that I would be led by the people who have more experience with those than me. I agree. Yeah. I, but I just yeah. wanted to mention, because I've, no, I've seen that yeah, float yeah. around a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is good to mention that, I think. 
Um, but as um, someone who do doesn't, I didn't, I would be lying if I said that I had noticed that whilst I was reading it and I don't feel qualified to comment and I'm throwing my cards <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> I'm going to go with a five He's on so passionate. One. But yeah, I'd say five too. So. Oh. Book of form and emptiness. Now, much as I loved the structure of this one, I did, like, I would say the characterization. I didn't dislike it, but I felt quite, I think some of them worked and some of them worked less mm -hmm. well again actually similar to what we just said about sorrow and bliss i would be curious as to again how people with more experience or knowledge found the presentation of the mental health um uh difficulties and challenges that that, that he's going through and how those are because that's very central and he spends time in sense for young people with mental health difficulties and like how that's all portrayed and how much is real and not real because it obviously manifests as these uh, like these items these things are talking to him and we are to understand that it's <laughs> whether it's real or not actually uh, you know and whether that yeah. is a sensitive portray I yeah I'd be curious to know more from people who have more experience. It's not something I'm saying is good or bad, really, honestly, but I'd be curious to know. There was certain bits where I was like, oh, does this make, this makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, but I feel like I don't have the knowledge to be able to articulate whether that's just my own thing or whether that's rooted in that the way that that's portrayed. Yeah, I mean, I would especially like to hear from <laughs> readers that are uh, parents of teenagers, like how, how they... Right. Um, feel about the the portrayal of this because I, I have to admit I, I struggled a bit with the the mother and um in some scenes and there was like one scene in particular when the mother uh has this is, is trying to like desperately form this connection with the son and starts singing to him this like child mm -hmm. song that they um sang to together and like starts singing it at him and I I understood that as as like an act of desperation of the parent trying to connect with a teenage child in this way that was being so unresponsive to her but but at the same time it felt like it was it was almost like so ludicrous to to like imagine that 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 was going to trigger this uh, him like responding in a in a positive way that um i i just felt like she i mean i know she she's dealing with her own issues as, as well and but um but yeah I just I struggled a bit with with her and in terms of believing because that's interesting because she was character. one of the characters that really worked for me I mm. really felt for her I felt like the her grief and desperation felt very real to me and then you have the characters who it, it's funny because they're of, some of the characters are obviously purposefully quite extreme and unrealistic or well, not yeah. unrealistic but you know the, the girl who's sort of living on the streets but she's also this kind of it's funny because the whole book obviously exists and it's like is this real is this not real right and it makes it hard to <laughs> i'm never quite sure if we're yeah. how but that's an interesting question in itself isn't it like because that can be an interesting thing to put into a novel but it's all about this like intentionality isn't it because i'm i would like to have perhaps and this is just personal taste a little bit more of a grasp on whether i think that what the author is doing purposefully yeah, I'd be really interested to hear talk about this book. And yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, it'd be one, I feel a bit floundery sometimes when I'm trying to discuss it. And I actually, it'd be really interesting. I wonder if she's done any online events. Might have a Google I'm sure she this has, yeah, Because yeah. I'd be really interested to hear about what she was exploring. Mm. But for the characters, I'd give yes. it a three, probably, in the sense that I really feel like some of it really worked, some of it didn't for me. Same. Yeah. Ah, there, there, there are some characters <laughs> in this that I, I just liked so much. And... Uh, really understood and believed in of mm -hmm. of the of of the the aunt and um and also the the portrayal of of kind of uh, secondary characters or or the like subplot mm -hmm. characters of of the two men in love uh on on cyprus and and their uh relationship and how that plays out even though we don't get too much of of their characters i, I still like fully believed them and, mm -hmm. and and understood um their motivations and difficulty and and the uh, the the dilemma of their their situation um so uh so yeah the the uh, a lot of the characters did really work really like including the fig tree and and the fig tree is like complex motivations of, of you see the thing is as soon as we're saying sentences 
like the fig trees complex motivations. I just immediately I'm like, out, check out. I can't. <laughs> the human characters worked better for me. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting one as well because it overlaps with writing quality because one of my frustrations is I felt like too many of the characters spoke the same. Their dialogue sounded the right, same. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's she has quite a formal writing style, which um works actually does work for me in the kind of prosy bits but i did feel like it kind of also was in the dialogue and i felt like too many of the characters for me um spoke too similarly to each other and spoke in a formal way that felt um just not how people talk especially the teenager and also didn't like the complex motivations of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there were some characters that really I was very moved by and it's also a tricky one because for, for me sometimes it was the way the dialogue was written that I struggled with rather than the character, the characters themselves. Mm, yeah, so it does um, So it kind of overlaps. But um, the fig tree, I would say, do you know what? If the fig tree wasn't involved, I would give it a three, but it's an automatic point down for the fig tree. <laughs> so it's a two. <laughs> I'm going to give it a four. Yeah, I'm, yeah. yeah. I was wondering if you could give it a five to open that account for me. <laughs> Great circle. I mean, I think that's very, very good. <laughs> very good. Very, very good. Um, yeah, I and mean, I guess the, I mean, obviously I think the two main characters are so well portrayed. Um, and I, I do wish, uh, which almost seems like a ridiculous thing to say in such like a long book, but I wish there was like more of some of the, the other characters um to to fully understand them but well no i i feel like i did understand them but mm -hmm. i just i just wish there, there was more of their story because i felt like there was more to tell uh, which characters do you mean because obviously the brother gets a lot of time and and i the character the brother's character i read i must have read this while ago i can't remember There's i'm thinking more of wanted. the native american character um who i oh, remember his name yeah um where i i felt like we just could have used a bit more of his story to um, fully. I get that. See his character. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember his. I his can name. literally remember Marion's name. Yeah, so. but I mean overall, yeah, really. I also had it's... some frustrations with some of the characters in the kind of speedy uh, issues. Is a strong word, I felt, but um, <laughs> the way that sexuality and the way that's used and the way other people use it. We sort of speed through a few generations at the start, and I felt like yeah. apologies if I'm misrepresenting this, but like it felt like all the women in that were either were punished essentially for elements of their, you know, they're either very passive or punished or assaulted, and um, I do understand why she did that because the book looks at how these things are used and how gender and sexuality impacts us and I understand why she did it but I guess um mm. I, I had a moment at the start where I was like oh is this a book that's about this and it isn't really and it doesn't have lots of upsetting scenes but there was a few bits at the beginning where I was like oh I hope this yeah you know, it's funny you mentioned that because actually I it took me a little while to get into reading this like I read mm. the beginning and um and I actually stopped and um but then came back to it and um and then once I got into the flow of it, it and I feel like the opening story, works in really hindsight like you I absolutely yeah. when I got to the end I really understood why she started it like that mm. and it did enrich my experience of it but at the start I was like oh what's this mm. Again, yeah yeah so absolutely I'm gonna same. give this a four I think it's a 4.5, really, for me. What are you thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> are you thinking, thinking just, just well, under or just over? I mean, I was debating, yeah, between 4 and 5. Okay, but, well, I'll give it a 4 and you give it a 5. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get my score for me. <laughs> well, I was thinking about maybe giving it a 5, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's no, like and I'm five yeah, for me. Yeah. So no, no, but actually, yeah, same. It, it kind of bounces. It gets yeah, back. I feel like we we we're, we're doing quite a lot. Though. It's okay. Setting an atmosphere of place. Starting with the bread the devil need. It's very good. Honestly, this is another yeah. of those categories that I don't ever really think about separate from mm. other things. But um, a lot of these experience. books do it very well. I would say. I would say this is a category that a lot of these books really excel at. I thought it was very well done. I have never been to Trinidad. Um, but I thought it was really conjured very effectively and I was constantly 
googling places because I wanted to see if it was like I was imagining it because I had a really like specific picture in my mind and mm -hmm. but, like particularly what I thought was really good was the um the old house in the citrus grove when they go back to it I just thought that was so wonderfully done yeah um but also just the street where the shop is like I the fake like I feel like I had really vivid pictures the whole sense of, of the community this like bustling yeah. community and yeah and even just small things, the way the, she captures, like when she goes to that very fancy restaurant with the friend, yeah. she really captures the way, how mm. that feels, um, like if you're not used to being in that setting and the kind of, just even small things, like it's always a little bit too cold and, you know, like I just thought it was very well done. Absolutely. Do you know what? I'm actually talking I, my symptoms. I'm like, I can't think of anything. <laughs> I'm like... Yeah, I... Mm. I can't think of a quick way to... I, I can't think... I don't feel like I have a criticism of the, the sense of atmosphere and place. So I'm gonna give it a five. Yeah, I'm. I'm no, it's unfair though because then I'm yeah. gonna come to like my enjoyment in reading and I'm gonna lowball it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm gonna give it a four though actually. Uh, just well, <laughs> partly because you're giving it a five and so to balance it out. But I just I know we shouldn't be. That five feels too high almost, but then equally I'm like I yeah. can't think of a I can't think of anything that didn't work in terms of the setting or atmosphere. So it feels like crawl to take a point off just yeah, because it, it wasn't seem... my favourite book on the shortlist. Mm. So. It's, it's tricky. Okay, the sentence. We're going to carry on. The sentence. You know, I, I love the atmosphere of the bookstore yeah. that this, this yeah. created. Oh, it was sure. just so totally believable um, and was I was I was right there and mm -hmm. all of the interactions of the people that, the, the, yeah, uh, it, it, um, it worked so well. Uh, uh, but then yeah, also the, the end, it just like stands out in my mind of um, the, the, the atmosphere she, mm -hmm. she created, she just totally nailed that. <laughs> and it's dropped her scores again. Sorry, I'm messing, messing with my scorecards. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. thought those, um, those aspects were so well done. Um, I would say I'm very well that I've been to Minneapolis and I was kind of picturing the bookstore as like on the street where I went and visited a bookstore. And I do wonder <laughs> if I hadn't been there, how I would have imagined it. Huh. Um, I think that the bookstore itself is wonderfully realised uh, and but there was perhaps the broader setting um, was could have been perhaps set in but it couldn't have been set in other places because it's really linked to the fact that that's where George George Floyd, Floyd was murdered the bookstore itself was just wonderful wasn't it yeah I'm gonna give it a four I think I'll give it a four too yeah I think <laughs> It's not really a book where, like, the sense it's, of place is a key thing, is it? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, I mean, it really, I, I think it's fair to say that it's, yeah, it's not a major factor in the... Is it set? Is it in London? Because the author's not British. Is no. she she's Australian? Yeah, she lives in Australia. But I'm, like, that, realising that in my head I imagined it in London. Like, is that just because I live in London and so I imagine, often imagine... But it must be set in a specific... I'm really not sure, even specific. though I've read it recently. I mean, maybe this is a factor the in... Yeah, the problem for me is that I'm like, I read it a year ago. Yeah. And so I'm like, how much of this is just because it's not about where it's set? And how much is because it's not... I mean, I, in my brain, it's set in London, but then I'm like, is that just... <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't like, think it's just that, though, because, yeah, I did read it recently and I'm struggling to remember like locate where it was I mean but I think partly just because UK. that's not that that's not like the most important right. factor of the story and and um so I wasn't playing like, into it as much whereas in the sentence obviously that's a huge part of like where it is uh, yeah towards the end of the book so I do feel like I have a very particular <laughs> memory if they go to like a family party and it's at one of these like old I think why I really am like it's at London isn't it because they go to that family home and it's like a kind of London townhouse isn't it like on a and that like I can picture that scene mm, yeah um, yeah I know that you um hated the exhibitionist but it just makes me think about how <laughs> one thing i think we would have agreed on is that it does do north london uh, oh yes center place yeah very good. it does um okay i feel like i'm gonna have to give it a three because i can't really remember anything <laughs> about it. And I sort of agree, yeah. I, I think. Yeah. Uh, but it also feels like I'm just... perhaps penalizing it unfairly for being a book that isn't really about place. Yeah, and again with sort of like author intentions, then <laughs> that's it's not that's not yeah, the kind it feels... of thing she was going for. I feel for, like I'm but... perhaps being unfair because maybe if I reread it, I'd be like, 
Holy moly, it's so much about life in London. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Meg think... Mason, but we have given you very high scores and everything else, so I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if she like won and she's like, but I cannot take pleasure in this victory <laughs> because Anna and Eric only gave me three for a sense of the atmosphere in place. <laughs> I am biased because this is massively set in a library with a book bindery in it. And yeah, I it's hard not to feel endeared by towards my core that personality to love these things <laughs> a because i'm learning bookbinding and so i was like oh yes the guillotine and oh paper stock and just felt very smug about knowing very basic things but the <laughs> library gave me such an overwhelming sense of nostalgia for working in my university library when i was even just you know when you had like you had a corral that was like the one you always aimed for and like camping out there and like sneaking in snacks i got very good actually sorry university of Birmingham library it's sneaking in a coffee not even in a flask like in a coffee cup and like balancing it straight um and never spill it so it's fine um <laughs> and it just i just like i really loved my university library and i loved working there and it gave me such an i know it's a very modern it just gave me such a sense of over i was like can I access? How can I access the university library? There must be one that I can go and work in. I was like, I want to go and write my books in it. And <laughs> I just, I loved it. It really felt like it captures that big library sense. I also liked some of the more er erratic, like the kind of um, erratic, it's not eccentric is what I mean, really, locations, like when they go up the hill, even though it's a bit unlikely. Like I felt like the sense of place was conjured very vividly. Yeah. I felt like their flat, which is too full of stuff, was kind of, you felt very claustrophobic yeah. reading it. The kind of factory they are in for a bit with all the snow globes, like I thought, mm. um, even mm. and the, the, the Buddhist temple. Yeah, I think. Right. Again, the one that's like crumbling and mm. then like again. So um, yeah. I thought the sense of place is very strong and uh, lots of kind of a good mix of realistic and slightly more eccentric ones and all of them felt very vivid to me. Yeah, and uh, maybe this straight slightly into characterization, but, but also the, the the way that she chose the the um kind of and I mean this in a very affectionate sense, but like the oddballs that kind of hang around in uh, can hang around in a library and and you you just get this sense of, of people that are like often there yes. and are just kind of hanging around and um and uh yeah, so I, I really liked that and how that built up. But yeah, also the their their home and and this um shifting sense of uh yeah, the, between this um very claustrophobic sense of, of filled with all this stuff where which she finds a kind of like security, but then when you see it from the outside mm -hmm. that it's like like oh this is an issue and um and not healthy mm -hmm. and all the way so, through she mm. does a really good job of contrasting the way that we like the different ways people perceive some the same spaces like mm. the library in their home and even yeah. the um like like squatting or camping out places and how that can be um places of beauty and power to some people and like i think that she does a really good job of mm. the way we um different people perceive the same physical space yeah i agree yeah. so i thought the sense of place was one of the book's real strengths and I'm a hovering between a four or a five. I feel like I'm going first and I need to, I want some reactive thoughts more. You go first. I'm giving it a four. Okay. <laughs> I give it five. <laughs> because yeah. actually, again, I feel like it, oh, the place actually was really vivid to me. I thought it went really well. Honestly, if we did this on another day, I might give it something completely different scores. Yeah, that's a really tricky thing <laughs> about this. So, Island of Missing Trees. The sense of place that I would say is absolutely what. Oh my goodness! I'm so sorry. I need to put them down. I'm like a child. Uh, the sense of place is wonderful in this. Like I thought it was beautifully done. Um, particularly Cyprus more than necessarily um, London, but that's yeah. the nature of it. Yeah. Um, both in both time periods, mm -hmm. the cafe in particular was just beautifully uh, created, um, and I thought it was very good. Yeah, and uh, and. Yeah, I think I think the the sense of the school and the the daughter's um, uh, feeling of isolation in the school and um, yeah, and that whole atmosphere um, I think was created really well. Um, also, so um, I you have to go first. I give it a five. I'm gonna give it a four. And a great circle. <laughs> Again. Uh, I just think it's wonderful. I think the writing is... Oh, no, we're not talking about writing. We're talking about sense of place. <laughs> Atmosphere That's very and good sense too. of place. <laughs> the way, particularly when, like, actually, everywhere they go, I'm getting flingy. 
<laughs> Getting passionate. I can, even though I read this, it's interesting because I can't remember mm. any of the characters' names, but I can immediately bring to mind several of the settings and the yeah. scenes with like in, in in really with real clarity. Yeah, and from so many different places, yeah. so many different time periods, yeah, yeah. from Hollywood to like, yeah, like England like during the scene, war. I have a really um, vivid picture of it, and like the the kind of backwater, like where they live with their uncle and the farm, yeah. and like. Uh, and then when she gets married and like even the ice like which I don't even have a lot of like I said I don't really know what it's like but Mm -hmm. my brain is conjured because of her the way she does it yeah the sensory experience of of all these different places I feel like yeah are so clear in in my mind yeah really very much so and like the brother when he goes and is a painter in the park like I feel like I have a really vivid sense of his time with that family even just like a lot of my memories are very visual of this. Like, I can picture him, like, sorting through the paintings in the yeah, attic and then yeah. going down to the door. Like, I can picture that really clearly. So, five, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, same, five. <sighs> how do you say, how do you even marry Shipstead? <laughs> I was going to say, oh, marry Shipstead, you're doing real well. <laughs> <laughs> Writing quality. Writing quality. This is such a subjective thing, like... I also feel like this is something I feel nervous about critiquing writers for, honestly. Like, I feel like this feels like such a brutal thing to be like, I don't like it. <laughs> mm, yeah. And, uh, I know that really some of it is more like the style and thing. whether that style works for you or not. None of these are bad books, you know, it's, um, but uh, it was one that makes me feel a bit more jittery about criticising. And I'd say, for. yeah, the, the writing quality in that it's, it's, very easy to read i i got into this story like immediately mm-hmm. and also like the um the the way she represents the, the the accents of the characters and the um their their speech i could like hear it so yeah well in my mind and i think that is like a mark of of, of really yeah. good writing um to to be able to do that um, it did take me a little bit to get into this one like the first kind of 30 okay. 40 pages i read very slowly and i just wasn't quite huh. like in okay. the rhythm Hmm. Uh, but once it, once I got into the rhythm of it, I read it very quickly. I think it's very well executed. Again, I feel like it's very intentional, um, yeah. the way it's written. Do you know what? I feel like my scores aren't all <laughs> going to match up to what my, like, my last score for the, like, my enjoyment is. I just am warning you now. Sometimes it's going to be completely out of step with the scores I've given <laughs> because it's vibes, isn't it? It's like, regardless yeah. of taking it apart and rating it as a craft thing, sometimes something just works or doesn't for you. Yeah. I would say probably four for this one. I'll give it four to you. I feel like my five for atmosphere is a bit was a bit overzealous for that. Let's not look back. Let's, let's carry on. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> the sentence. Uh, writing quality. I thought this was beautifully written. Again, a writer where I felt in very safe hands. But yeah. was, again, I keep using the word, oh, God, the word intentional, intentionality. I've said that so many times. But like, I felt there was a real intentionality to it. Mm. Um, careful, but I don't mean careful in a bad, precious way in terms of like, just really knew what they were doing and their words were used exactly as they wanted to. <laughs> Unlike mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think... Uh... This is, this is a, a, almost like a writer you can tell she's written a lot of she books before this and so it, yeah, yeah is, is, is like very and confident it's funny words. too which I really like yeah like, genuinely absolutely. funny yeah which is is difficult to do and think it's something that's not yeah rated um, as highly as it should be in, uh, in in a lot of books that um, of books that are able to do that successfully and well um, yeah it's uh, yeah very very well done I'm like struggling though between uh, four I'm talking between yeah, four and five four five yeah because just purely on a sentence level I just think she is really very good do you know yeah. what also partly I'm like I think it's better on a sentence level than the bread the devil need and I just gave that four Mm. I should have given that a three, I think. <laughs> Can I change it? I know we're not going back, but um, it's just the last one. Can I change that one to three? Okay. But only just because I need somewhere to go. <laughs> it's not yeah. it's more it's more that it's more that I need somewhere to go. I would say three point five is really where I'm at for that. And then I I really this is probably a four point five, but I'm gonna give it a four. Just because again I need somewhere <laughs> to go for some of the other ones. 
Yeah, okay, I'm going to give it a five. Okay, that's so. good, that evens out, yeah. yeah. For example... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then immediately you're going to go... I just think this is such an easy five for me. I just was in awe of her sentences. One of those writers is just a joy to read because they're so in control of their craft. Yeah. They are using their words beautifully. It's funny and it's moving and it's clever. And I just thought on a sentence level, this was pretty extraordinary. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. So yeah, yeah. I'd say five. Yeah. This mm. is a really tricky one because yeah. I think actually, again, on a sentence level, I do think this is beautifully done. And I think that it's crafted very intentionally. Uh, <laughs> and the things that didn't work about me were things perhaps we that didn't work about me, being Freudian, uh, the things that didn't work about the book, we, I feel like have been covered in some of the other categories. Yeah. Um, it wasn't flawless, but I thought it was a very purposeful and well-crafted book on a writing level. I mean, I've, I've been thinking about recently with my reading of, of uh, books that the author has a message that they're trying to put right, across. Right, okay, okay. Because uh, you didn't um, like that in this. But is that writing quality? I don't know. It must come somewhere. Maybe you're enjoying it <laughs> as reading. Because there is always going to be yeah. these ineffable things that just you can't encapsulate. On a, on, a set, on a writing, like a craft level, I mean, even with this, this is like things that we like and don't like. Mm. Very, but I'm going to give this a four on its writing quality. I'm going to give it a three. That's okay. I thought okay. you might. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to say is, <laughs> for me as a reader the writing style was not a good fit and yeah. it clearly is with other people i'm not saying that this is an objectively badly written book but the style did not suit me as a reader okay i think that's that's fair <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um whereas yeah for for me it it did too and i and i was able to to really get into it the, the way it was written really added to all the other elements of the story and, and building up and, and making me feel involved and engaged um, mm -hmm. with it. I read it a four, I think. Okay. Struggled like I wouldn't have. I'm no, that's fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like every time you hold this book, I'm like, it's very good. <laughs> it's very but good. it is. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it's. It's. Yeah. It, it's, it's very well written. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and again, it's, I feel like I'm being very repetitive, it's... but it's a writer that's really in control of what they're doing. The craft is beautiful. The sentences are wonderfully done. <laughs> ah, yeah, they, about other people's writing it really can make you seem like a person who doesn't understand how words work. <laughs> <laughs> but but... There's, there's, there's lots of uh, scenes of, of small bits of dialogue and, and moving lines that maybe like stop and think about them that they have like a, a deeper yeah. meaning but but also just the um the the style of of writing um made me feel so uh into the story <laughs> I, I felt um totally um engaged in it and um and yeah. so yeah it's, made it's, me want to just do you know what i feel like when i say i would have happily read more of it what i mean is that i just want to be reading more of her work um and i did go and buy her other books after i read okay. this and really that's what i think that means isn't it you just want to be in that author's brain uh i want to read more of her words yeah i'm gonna have to give this a five i think yeah i think i i will too yeah so it's gosh, maggie ship <laughs> says really doing well I hope she wow. comes to the party so we can be like, my gosh, I'm stuck a lovely That'd be great. If we have enough Prosecco, we might. Okay, and my That'd enjoyment of reading. This, I think we can enjoyment speed through, can't we? Because this, this is vibes, instinct. Yeah. Uh, right. For this one, this is why okay. I feel guilty because I feel like but I'm gonna, it, it's a three. Uh, it's a, it's a very healthy generous three it's a 3.5 really <laughs> but partly because i want to differentiate between this is the easiest score for me and because i want to differentiate between um, yeah like I've, favorites I've, next favorites next favorites and this different is books a yeah three. that makes sense um for me i think it'd be a four mm -hmm. if i was going to be very specific i'd say 4.2.5 <laughs> like, like i reckon i'm a 3.75 would that make it a four but it's not a four it's a three okay maybe it's <laughs> oh, no, less maths. Okay, and then the sentence is a four for me. Next here, I think that's why I saw partly why I gave that a three because I think this is. For me, I think it'd be a three okay. sentence. Yeah. I, I think also it's it's partly to since this is a writer that 
uh, obviously hadn't read before, had no expectations yeah, about, yeah. and so the the sort of delight and surprise. Right, of, and, so, and it's a debut, fun. isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think she's written some children's books okay. before. Um, so yeah, I think this is her so first book for adults. Because children's books are real books. They are. Thor and Bliss. Five. Yeah, five for me too. Um, yeah. And and uh, and you know, especially like the the book it itself is fantastic but reading it within the the context of like the reading community and having so much expectations mm -hmm. about this and even going into it and being like is it really going to be yeah. that good and then just being like oh, no it's, it's really one of those good. books that you really feel like you can recommend it be like you, i don't even worry i i'm not worried about the hype like it's mm, i don't yeah. know anyone who hasn't liked it i don't think like obviously people like it to different levels but i don't feel like i know anyone who's like actually it's grossly overrated <sighs> ruta zeki Five. Why did you say five? You just said five. No. Did I? You went five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you don't like it. <laughs> Please leave that in if you did do that. Did I? Oh, God. We'll look back. It's near the end. Okay. I'm getting all yeah. muddled. How will we rate <laughs> book This is a, a three for me, although emptiness. a generous, another, another generous three. I really struggle with yeah, them, I suppose, fine. so I'm going to say two. I'm, I'm okay. uh, although I kind of wish you'd gone first because I might have given it a four. It's a generous, I won't change it though. This is a very generous three. Okay. But ultimately for me, it's because I've got two favourites and then the sentence, which is, a, I liked, I definitely yeah, like the sentence more, more than the Ezeki and more than uh, the Alan Agostini, but I definitely liked it less. So this is why I'm having to implement this structure. <laughs> Alan of Missing Trees. I just... It just really wasn't for me, unfortunately. For me, it's a four. Yeah. And Great Circle <laughs> is a five. Imagine after giving it, we're giving it mainly fives all the way through, and I'm like, oh, that's a three. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't make sense to, to give it anything else, but no. I did just totally enjoy it yep. so much. Um, and think, yeah, especially because it's so long mm. that, uh, you know, that's a really impressive, difficult thing to do. And to, it held my attention mm -hmm. for pretty much the whole time. Like, yeah, uh, except for that sort of like hiccup at the beginning of um, uh, that, it just, yeah, I, I was totally yeah. into the story. It's not relevant for this, for a book prize, but also if we were scoring the cover, I would give this a five for its cover as well. I just think beautiful. it's so beautiful. Yeah. Going to do some maths. Yeah, Right, yeah, write that down. Let's just check each other's. Yeah. I feel like we have okay. been talking for a long time to be doing mental arithmetic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you just put in, <laughs> do a little bonus video of just five minutes of this. <laughs> 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 four plus two plus three so we've done some maths yes <laughs> after double checking each other's work because <laughs> and we have like th frazzled. quite clear sort of three tiers um mm -hmm. uh the, so these were going kind of in reverse order so these first two got very similar scores 32 and 33 yes and so. these kind of represent the ones that we had the most differing opinions on mm -hmm. um so we've kind of evened each other out yeah, that, um, that kind of makes sense. So that, so that figures. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the next tier, I think, again, represents actually just the fact that these are both books that we really enjoyed, but aren't necessarily ones we would give a prize to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, these got 30 really and fair. 39. Like, I'm yeah, glad 39. I read both of, both of them. Whereas, and yet, if I was a judge, I wouldn't necessarily be like, this is the best book by a woman this year. But I'm really glad I read both of them and got a lot from them. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. And then we have... Two clear favourites. Soren Bliss got 45 points and Great Circle got 49. It only dropped, it dropped one point for <laughs> characterisation. Mm. Uh, and you know, that's good because a 50 out of 50 would have been absurd behaviour. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are our two favourites, which are my, like, I, this has come out, we haven't somehow been like, whacked it out by realizing one book has like incredible plot structure these are easily my two favorites sorry bless and great circle yeah me too even yeah I think uh, we, we, we could have told you before an hour and a half of talking about <laughs> these but that, that, these are my two favorites but you know it's a fun exercise isn't it <laughs> so what we've made is what we already knew <laughs> 
<laughs> thanks for spending this time with us. <laughs> but you know, it, it is interesting. And it would have been interesting. Yeah. What, what's curious is... There's the scoreboard. Or do we value different things? Like I'm curious as to what's skewed, um, like how these scores match up with what we value but perhaps there's not. Mm. That's too much maths after we've been <laughs> filming for too long. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so, and these do, these are the two that I would, I would really like for one of these to win. Yeah, I'd really like to see one of them. But a pretty, okay, so here's the thing that I didn't already know <laughs> before we started filming, is that mm. I think that Island of Missing Trees will win. Mm, yeah, I, I know that's, but that was your prediction But will this happen before. in the judging room? Mm. But then having said that, one would think perhaps not, because otherwise we wouldn't be on the shortlist. Um, but it is one of those ones that there are but, people, you know, I have some friends who had a similar take to me. And like you said, you know, some mm -hmm. people in the comments. And I wonder if, is one of the judges feeling the same enough to, this is where you start like kind of trying to game the system rather than like just predicting, isn't it? Because is, if one judge felt like that, would it yeah. stop winning often a book that wins a prize is because it's every judge's second favourite book mm -hmm. um, and that's where something like I think maybe Sorrow and Bliss might sneak in because I can see it's a really unifying choice isn't it like I, I can't see massive disagreement on it yeah and and before this whole process um, I I would have predicted this mm. as, as the winner I would like be very surprised is. if it wasn't one of these three yeah me too. And, and I think it's probably, I would say, Meg, I would say one of these two. But yeah, I mean, so I mean, it's good. the one that we, in terms yeah. of quality, we're judging as, as, yeah. as the top. So I this mean, is our favorite. This, this is, the math has been done. Can't argue with math. <laughs> <laughs> this is our favorite. I don't really have anything to say other than like a gut feeling that this is going to win. I feel like there's a lot of I mean, there's a sense people. too of that almost like it's her time. Yes, it's, it's and she's pleasant. a wonderful woman, and I feel like it might be one of those like almost like as her representation of her backlist and from what she does and what she doesn't. Oh, I don't know, but that equally, you might have a panel that is like, no, that is not how we. You're not right. supposed to do that. Yeah, it's on the book. And they might, you might have a panel that actually wants to do that. You might have a panel that's like, that is not <laughs> how it works. Like it's about the book. Mm. But there's no way of knowing how much they're gonna no. do that. So and I'd be very happy to see her win. Um, and I'd be very happy to see any of these books. I wouldn't even though I didn't even like the book. I wouldn't even be usually if it's a book that I'm like it's still worth me. I'd be like I said angry for one, but like I wouldn't even be mad if this one won. Um, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. And to be honest, I wouldn't be mad to see actually, like any of these. There's none is, where yes. um, I would feel. Like a wrong what has, has been done. Yeah, that's really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But it certainly feels like it certainly feels like there's two books that are special. Yeah. Uh, usually, I have a bit more of a sense at this point because I usually do put some money on and mm. uh, get it right. Mm. But uh, I don't. I have think that it is same a really tricky year to call. So. We with any shall absolute see. sense, yes. We'll see you next Wednesday. Yes. We go to the, the party, yeah. which is so exciting. So, yeah. I mean, the most important question I have to ask you about all this, have you planned your outfit yet <laughs> <laughs> for going to the party? Oh, do you know, it's actually been a whole thing. <laughs> I them. might just wear a something that feels that I can just have a nice time. Are you going to vlog? Right. I yeah I've not decided yet because it's it's such a tricky thing I don't know I tell me people if you if you yeah. would really like to see me do a I vlog love our of the, the prize chat ceremony after maybe but, um, we could do if you decide not to maybe we could do a little live on Instagram on one of our channels post result yeah um that would be fun and good and I do too. usually I'll do a live of the winners announcement on my Instagram if you want to be in the room and uh, see the speech. I have done that last couple of years. Fingers crossed the weather is good because uh, yes. it has been <laughs> rainy and then sunny, um, quite yeah. alternating quite a lot. But, and um, this is at an in outdoor event. <laughs> so yeah, um, but let us know in the comments below um, also your thoughts about this. If you have any predictions for mm -hmm. the winner, um, if, you have any, if you have any strong <laughs> feelings about our, our scores or our math skills. <laughs> Please don't tell us if you have feelings about our math scores. <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't need to know that, but, um, but yeah, love to know if you're really rooting for a book mm -hmm. and would like to see it a win. Um, yeah, or if you have any strong feelings in terms of predictions, mm -hmm. if you feel like you've 
cracked. Well, yes, you think the judges the might. Yeah, it's a hard one. It's always a hard one to predict. Where the sometimes the lists feel you can pull out clearly what judges are into. You can often it's a, yeah. a sign of a very unified judging panel where the, the tastes align. You can see patterns. Whereas I do think this is a year that perhaps speaks to a judging panel who don't have similar tastes. Mm. It's a little bit of a. It's not the most cohesive shortlist I've read. I would say that's not to say I didn't enjoy the books, but um, yeah, sometimes they really work together in a group as a way that this feels like quite six quite disparate mm. books. So it'd be yeah. interesting to see. It makes it hard to predict. It really does. We shall see. But yeah, exciting. And also, I'm just gonna say you might have noticed I'm wearing an Emily Bronte t-shirt, yes, uh, which is lovely. part of the Women's Prize collaboration with Girls on Tops, uh, and the money that's raised from them goes to supporting the Women's Prize. Um, and so there's lots of different authors, uh, Girls on Tops. It makes me laugh. Such a simple joke. It doesn't make me laugh. Uh, <laughs> and there's lots of lots of yeah. t-shirts to pick from. So if you have uh, noticed it you can have your very own there is a wide array of women writers that you can have on your t-shirt <laughs> oh, what a lovely ad <laughs> it's <laughs> but, not oh i should just say no, no, it's, it's not, not an no, ad no, like no, as in like no, no. i haven't been given i was given the t-shirt no, no. for free yeah. but i haven't been asked <laughs> to wear it for a video or given any money to do this yeah, no, it's just, just the way you said that <laughs> clear. no i just love the prize and uh, i was yeah. given the t-shirt for free but i was not asked to um talk about it and I'm very jealous because I wasn't given a t-shirt. But um, but yeah, I, I always put you're a link down girl. below. You're to, not a girl on top. I'm so. not. So <laughs> as much as I wish I could be. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I always put a link to um, the Women's Prize website down below. So um, yeah, go through and I'm sure there's the, the shop on there. It is a charity. That I think that's the thing. It's a, yeah. The prize is a charity. So yeah. um, if you do a few free pennies or cause. you like the t-shirts, then it is a worthy cause. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you for watching us for just <laughs> another another long discussion, but uh, but but yeah, a really enjoyable one. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, I it was great, I, I enjoyed tangling with it in a, in a different way. <laughs> it was a good challenge to. Yeah, it was no, I, it made me really question way. the things that I value in a book, and mm. it made me really think about how it's very tricky to separate these things, up, isn't it? And it how is, much yeah. they're all interlinked, and what impacts what, and what doesn't. I found it a very interesting exercise. Thanks. Buzz. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Peg. <laughs> hey, Peg. <laughs> Great. Thank you. On that note, <laughs> we'll maybe see you uh, on the 15th via various social media. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be um, uh, yeah, commenting not, on it. We'll see you next December. year when it all begins again. Right, but yeah, thanks for joining us for another season journey. <laughs> Speak to you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>